Anna. Anna is gone. After days of emailing her, calling her house, and even knocking on her front door, I finally got an answer. I went over to her house today. Her car wasn't in her driveway. The curtains weren't closed, so I decided to look in. I put my face against the glass and cut my eyes with my hands. There's nothing in the living room. It was empty. I then tried to call her cell phone and went straight to voicemail. I really hope her voicemail is not the last time I'm going to hear my partner's voice. Can you imagine how that feels? I'm being left here with John. Even John is acting weird at me now. He seems withdrawn and quiet, not as chipper as he was when he first got to us. John doesn't want to do this anymore. Neither of us do. Nothing else huge has happened since my dream. I still hear knocking and sometimes quiet chuckling in the distance. I plan on going to my dad's house soon. I'm still trying to figure out why Stitch was acting as my dad in my dream and why my mother didn't notice it was a monster. I can't get the sound of my mother's skin getting ripped out of her out of my head. The tearing of veins and tight skin splitting. It's driving me crazy. I'm not listening to Stitch laughs, laughing in my head. It's all the disgusting sounds I've had to hear over the past month. Bones breaking, skin ripping, guts being thrown around. Repetitive routine screams. It's always the same with gruesome sounds like that. Someone getting their neck slit. Someone smacking their head on pavement after getting hit by a car. Someone gurgling in their own blood after having their face bashed in. The sound is always much worse than the image. And the sound's gonna stick with you for your whole life. It's gonna haunt you. I'll keep in touch. Right.